Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Swordfish, and it stars John Travolta, Hugh Jackman, Holly Berry, Don Cheadle, Sam Shepard, Benny Jones, Drea Di Matteo, Rudolph Martin, and Zach Lanier. It's written by Skip Woods, who later went on to do the terrible A Good Day to Die Hard, and it's directed by Dominic Cena, who previously directed the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, the remake. The movie begins when a DEA had shut down its corporation, Operation Codenamed Swordfish, in 1986. They had generated $400 million which had been left behind, 15 years of compound interest that swelled to $9.5 billion. A counter-terrorist unit called Black Cell, headed by a mastermind, Gabriel Shear, played by John Travolta, wants the money to help finance the race the stakes of Benjamin's war against international terrorism. But it's all locked away behind a super encryption. He brings in a convict hacker, Stanley Jobson, played by Hugh Jackman, who had been arrested for two years, who was on parole because he couldn't afford any legal fees prior to the fact that he wants to see his daughter again, Holly. So eventually, he gets chosen to do the job along with, with a girl named Ginger, played by Halle Berry, by hacking the code that's into the system, robbing the bank, kidnapping all the hostages, and let them ride into the flying bus, which is pretty silly. And and see how it ends until he finally gets his daughter back. Well, this was made at the time when The Matrix was very popular, that they wanted to come up with another movie that's sort of in the tradition of The Matrix in that sort of way. But it's more like a spy thriller that works so well. It's with intelligence and, and cooperative and everything. Because even though this is the same producers that that was behind the Matrix. And um, I really loved the opening sequence when John Travolta's character, Gabriel Shear, had, who has tremendous dialogue in this scene, he was talking about how Hollywood is just coming up with uh, different ideas and they come up with different cliches, which happens so many times in movies. Kind of an interesting quote that he was mentioning about that. He took an example of a movie called Dog Day Afternoon, where Pacino had his idea of robbing a bank. So his version wanted to be exactly a lot different than what he was doing. So that was <laughs> that was very interesting. Um, and he does come up with a lot of stuff that kind of gets the story going, and just so it, it could set up their plan on how to get all the money you know, in the world and how they're going to be able to you know, manage to deal with. But that was their plan, <laughs> basically. And he has a great cast, too. I think John Travolta was the best choice to play a mastermind and, a, and an awesome bad guy, you know, prior to his awful film, Battlefield Earth. Because, yeah, that came out before this movie did. And it was a much better film than Battlefield Earth. That's for sure. But I'm just happy that he went up to do a better film than that. But this was the time when he knew he was going to choose different roles uh, every now and then. And just... But he was very good in this movie. And I really enjoyed it. Um, Halle Berry was was very hot in this film. Yeah, Hugh Jackman was very good prior to his uh, last film, X-Men, because yes, he was in all the X-Men movies, along with Halle Berry. <laughs> so th this was an interesting that they were working together prior to the X-Men franchise at the time. 
Uh, Vinnie Jones, uh, who went on to do movies like Snatch, Last Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, and his previous one, Dawn in 60 Seconds, also directed by Dominic Sina. And he was very good in this movie. He's always playing those uh, those badass type roles. You know, he's always playing you know a guy with a huge attitude. You know, he's like a bulldog, if, if you ask me. And of course, he went on to do X Men Free, playing the Juggernaut, which I didn't think it was a great sequel, to be honest. You know, but but he, he's been doing a lot of films over the years. Don Cheadle was very good too, as the FBI agent you know, trying to track Gabriel down from his uh, from his plan that he's coming up with. And he arrested Stanley, but he was trying to find a way to be able to see his daughter back again. This this was a pretty well made action spy thriller that I've ever seen, because one of the memorable scenes in this movie was the the flying bus which was hooked up to a helicopter filled with all the hostages that he uh, captured inside the bus and and it flew all the way around downtown LA you know, knocking into some buildings you know, crashes everywhere it was you know, had awesome special effects in this movie pretty interesting for a movie that was made at its time but uh, it was it was really fun, I mean, but I think it was very underrated when it came out. So I think it's definitely worth you know sitting through when you want to see to see how this mastermind works and how this was created in that sort of way. It's definitely worth watching if you ever get a chance to see it when it's on TV or or if you buy it on DVD and Blu-ray. You know, th this is exactly the kind of movie you want to see. So I definitely recommend this. So anyway, I give Swordfish four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.